we dare you not to chuckle at any of these lines. What you have in mind? Uh, VV, I'm really into penicillin. <laughs> That's funny! <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest movie quotes of the 1980s. Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? For this list, we're taking a look at the most hilarious quotes from 80s movies that have had the most staying power. These jokes must be funny out of context, and not simply because of a visual gag or excellent delivery. And they do not actually have to be featured in comedy movies. Thank you very little. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades. So. At last, we meet for the first time for the last time. Yeah. Number 10. I'm a Mog. Spaceballs. What do you want? It's me. It's us. We all know dogs are man's best friend. But what do you get when you cross a dog with a man? A Mog, of course. Hi. Who are you? Barf. While it's never made clear whether Mogs are aliens, hybrid experiments, or simply the product of spacey bestiality, Barf's genetic background allows him to be his own best friend, as he proudly explains in Spaceballs, a movie that's populated with more than its fair share of visual and verbal gags. What are you? I'm a mog, half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend. This also means that he can walk himself, feed himself, and clean up his own messes, which he likely has to do often with a name like Barf Olimu. Who are you? I'm the best man. What's your name? Barf. Your full name. Bartholomew. Number nine. Did a bus park on your face? Roxanne. Hey, where are you going, big nose? <laughs> In Roxanne, Steve Martin plays Charlie Bales, a man with a nose so bulging that it'd make Cyrano de Bergerac gawk. Pardon me? You heard me, big nose. <laughs> Where some people might view his honker as a disadvantage, Charlie totally owns his disfigurement like a boss. What a waste of an opportunity. What? Well, I mean, you've got someone standing in front of you with uh, this, and all you can think up is big nose. And this instance in particular exemplifies Charlie's self-assurance and Martin's knack for one-liners. I suppose you could think of something better. Uh, yeah, I think I could think up something better. Rather than allowing a heckler's insult to damage his confidence, Charlie rips him a new one. He accomplishes this by not only making fun of his adversary via a harangue of zingers, but also by finding the humor in his own imperfections. Excuse me, is that your nose or did a bus park on your face? <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, last time I was inside a woman, crimes and misdemeanors. Comedy is tragedy plus time. Woody Allen is undeniably one of the wittiest dialogue writers that ever lived, often deriving inspiration from his loving relationship with New York and his love-hate relationship with the opposite sex. I mean, if you want a happy ending, you, you should go see a Hollywood movie. <laughs> In Crimes and Misdemeanors, Alan's Cliff Stern sums up the sorrow of any New Yorker who just can't find a date. But you know what you told me? You told me it's been platonic for a year, and I say once the sex goes, it all goes. Every screenwriter in the world wishes they could come up with a line this smart, sharp, and side-splitting. That's one of the reasons why Alan is a true figure of inspiration kind of like the Statue of Liberty. Last time I was inside a woman is when I visited the Statue of Liberty. Number seven, we're all gonna get laid. Caddyshack. Hey, hey, I'll break it up, break it up. I no respect. Gentlemen, please, what's going on? To Rodney Dangerfield, one-liners were like a bottomless bucket of golf balls, and he could hit every one of them out of the driving range. Oh, this is your wife. Oh, a lovely lady. Hey, baby, you're all right. You must have been something before electricity, huh? <laughs> this particular line from Caddyshack is a definite hole-in-one to cap off a perfect round. Dangerfield's classic quote can apply to any sport, whether somebody's putting on the green, trying to make a basket, or shooting one through the five hole. Hey, Moose, Rocco, help the judge find his checkbook, will you? Oh, oh well, hey, I, you, well, I will. If you're an athletic sort, chances are you're bound to hear this line at least once in your life. And if you're really lucky, it might even come true. Hey, everybody, we're all gonna get laid. <laughs> Number six, Nice Beaver. The Naked Gun from the Files of Police Squad. I'm Lieutenant Frank Drebin, Police Squad. And don't ever let me catch you guys in America. On paper, most of the dialogue in The Naked Gun sounds immature, silly, or just plain dumb. 
And it does on screen, too. Uh, Cuban? Uh, no, Dutch Irish. My father was from Wales. But that doesn't mean it isn't also clever, well timed, and hysterical. This line epitomizes the franchise's ability to be idiotically ingenious as Frank compliments Jane on her nice beaver. Jane's implied furry cave of wonders, however, turns out to be a literal beaver that's just been stuffed, which is a double dose of double entendre. She was giving me a look I could feel in my hip pocket. Yep, this was starting to get interesting. It may be stupid, but Stephen Hawking himself couldn't write a smarter joke. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. Number five, in dire need of a blowjob, Good Morning Vietnam. I don't like your style, your politics, or your sense of humor. Like Rodney Dangerfield, Robin Williams was an unmatched comedic force that spouted out brilliant one-liners like they were his first language. From now on, the fighting men of Vietnam will hear exactly what they're supposed to hear. You're on a DC-8 from Tan San Airport tomorrow at 18.30 hours. This made Williams the ideal candidate to play Adrian Cronauer, a DJ in Vietnam who isn't afraid to say whatever pops into his head. I recommend you pack quietly. His most applause-worthy line in Good Morning Vietnam has got to be when he tells off Sergeant Major Dickerson, who lives up to his family name. Dickerson may not find Cronauer funny, but he's the only one. You know, you're in more dire need of a blowjob than any white man in history. Number four, haven't been f***ed in a year, Scarface. You want a cigar? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> she might be on fire, but Elvira Hancock could use a good, well, at least that's what Tony Montana says in Scarface. God, I have enough friends, I don't need another. Especially just got off a banana boat. With the body, legs, and face of Michelle Pfeiffer, Elvira could get any man she wants. Tony can tell from her uninterested expression, though, that Elvira is not using her assets to her full advantage. Banana ball? Hold on, man. You got your own guy here. I don't come off no banana ball, okay? A word of advice to all the ladies. If a guy tries to pick you up with this piggish yet hilarious line, blow him off immediately. And definitely don't become his trophy wife. You got a beautiful body, beautiful legs, a beautiful face, man. All these guys in love with you, man. All he's got a look in your eye like you haven't been in a year. Number three, lump a coal up his ass, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hello? Cameron, babe, what's happening? Very little. Few filmmakers wrote fourth wall breaking dialogue better than John Hughes. Whenever one of his characters turned to the camera, you always knew they were about to say something immortal. If anybody needs a day off, it's Cameron. He has a lot of things to sort out before he graduates. Among all of his iconic characters, Ferris Bueller is easily the king of cool, the king of fourth wall breaks, and the king of sausages. Always in fine form, Ferris's finest break has got to be this diamond of a line, an invaluable description of his neurotic friend Cameron. Pardon my French, but Cameron is so tight that if you stuck a lump of coal up his ass, in two weeks you'd have a diamond. Hey, if this is true, Cameron should be able to pay off the damage to his dad's Ferrari in no time. Hey, remember how insane he went when I broke my retainer? Huh? Come on, that was a little piece of plastic. This is a Ferrari. Number two, memorable afternoon. Arthur. My name is Arthur, and this is Mr. Hobson. In a performance that earned him an Academy Award, John Gielgud plays Hobson to sardonic perfection. Aside from a few standout sincere moments when he gives his master, Arthur, some fatherly advice, everything that comes out of this English butler's mouth is irony-glazed sarcasm. I'm going to take a bath. I'll alert the media. Perhaps his most drolly shrewd line in this 1981 comedy is directed towards Liza Minnelli's Linda. My name is Linda. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much. You did a nice thing. He may size her up as a bowling alley bunny, but Hobson also realizes Linda is just what Arthur needs. So take it as a compliment. Arthur, we really must be going. Thank you for a memorable afternoon. Usually one must go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. Before we crack up at our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. 
You're a true vulgarian, aren't you? You're the vulgarian, you f***. Yeah, but tell me, son, what's the charge? Possession of a concealed weapon and disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace? I got thrown out of a window! What's the f***ing charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? The royal penis is clean, your highness. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks we've been talking about the Platt Amendment. What are you people? On dope? Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point. Number one, don't call me Shirley. Airplane. Elaine, you're a member of this crew. Can you face some unpleasant facts? No. Touching down on runway number one is another priceless 80s line from Leslie Nielsen. Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. Up until then known as a dramatic actor, Nielsen's future as a comedic legend was set in stone with these immortal words. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. While the line itself will put a smile on anyone's face, it's the stone-faced way Nielsen says it with such solemn gravitas that causes the laugh meter to skyrocket off the charts. But this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying, altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind of flying. flying. Because it's delivered just as straight as it would have been in a true disaster movie, Nielsen's line is all the more funny. How are the passengers doing? I won't deceive you, Mr. Stryker. We're running out of time. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. And stop calling me Shirley. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the funniest movie quote of the 80s? Well, I was a better man with you as a woman than I ever was with a woman as a man. You know what I mean? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I see no reason for prolonging this conversation unless you're planning to knock over a fruit stand later in the evening. Good luck in prison.